Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Lectures in Lab Coats. My name is Sparks and I will be your lovely lab coated lecturing let's play for today. Um, in front of me I have uh, a selection of um, buttons and switches and levers and interactive items such as um, fence gates and trapdoors and I just want to show you that even though these um, are attached to nothing whatsoever, uh, they're completely independent, you can still use them to control redstone. So this button here will turn that lamp on. Uh, this lever here does the same thing. Uh, Trapdoor, same thing. Um, this string, even though it's not even attached to any hook, can be used to detect players. Uh, you can detect whether a uh, fence gate is open or shut, or a um, whatever this is, trapdoor, is, is, is depressed. Now, this is quite useful if you have space limitations for, for your redstone. So for example, over here, um, this would be sort of a practical application. Uh, there's a there's one block with four buttons on it, and each of these buttons turns on a different one of those lamps. Uh, so, for button panels, it makes it a lot a lot more compact. Um, it's quite simple how this works. Uh, it uses a test four block command uh, in 1.7. I'm currently in the 13 week 41b snapshot. So, um, test four block. Um, I'm using relative coordinates. So this is checking 10 blocks in the Z and one up, which is the uh, the position where this button is. It's 10 blocks away and one block up. Not the block that the button is sat on, but the, um, the button itself. Uh, and 77 is the ID of a button. And four is the, the data ID for a button that is facing, that is sat on, on a wall like that and isn't pressed. So if I had, um, if I had a button uh, facing this way, it has a different ID. That's four, this will be something else. If it's facing this way, it has a different ID, or this way, and all of those four directions will also have a different ID if they're pressed. So the way that I, I found it was basically, um, this is connected to a clock, so it's constantly checking. This comparator is on if it's true. So what I basically did was I started at zero, the comparator was off, changed it to one, still off, Change it to two, three, four, until it turned on, uh, which is how I worked out whether it was correct. As soon as you press this button, the the data value for that button changes, and therefore when this tests for an unpressed button in that space, it's no longer true, and it turns the light on. Uh, same thing for the levers, um, and it's basically a case of fiddling around with the, with the data IDs for each of them. So the lever has a data value of four, same as the button. Um, quite simply zero for a pressure plate because there's no directionality so it has a data value of zero when it's depressed and one when it isn't. Um, the string is kind of interesting, it has a data value of two um, and I think the direction will change that. But yeah, it's, um, it's fairly simple. Um, this thing over here works in exactly the same way. There's just coordinates for each button type, um, 10 blocks away, two across. Uh, you can see it's two for that, four for that, three for that, and one for that, so it's one, two, three, four for the different rotational positions of the button. Um, yeah, basically I think this could be pretty useful and um, uh, I'm sure there's applications you can use for it, especially I find, um, this one's kind of cool, the fact that you can have string completely uh, separate from anything else. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for today, just a bit of a for your information style video. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.